So, good morning, friends. We will be studying mood disorders. Mood disorders are called so because abnormality of mood is the main theme around them. Okay, so first we have depression. So, it is a very common question in university exams and is a very common presentation in day to day life. So, we have term like major depressive disorder, unipolar depression, depression. It is synonymous to each other. First is we are going to discuss about major depressive episodes or depressive episodes. In the absence of maniac, mixed or hypomaniac episode. Why we are seeing this? So that we can distinguish it from the bipolar disorder. So depression is the second most prevalent mental disorder. Okay. So uh, it is most common mental disorder in India, excluding tobacco use disorder. So this is an NCQ point. Okay. So, uh, female have more prevalence for depression. Then mean age is around 40. As you know, these days, geriatric depression is going around. More than 65 years, the person is considered to have start having geriatric depression. Okay, so, the, so depression is common in middle-aged females. It is commonly seen in divorced and separated people, people who live alone. Among psychiatric, depression is associated with maximum DALI. You know DALI? Disability adjusted life years, life years that are lived with disability. So uh, it, it is the second leading cause of the DALI. And depression is the most common cause of suicide. So this is uh, some key features that we don't need to remember. Then we come to the symptoms. So we have this mnemonic, Siggy Craps. According to this, uh, Siggy Craps, five symptoms must be present, and at least one of the first two uh, symptoms must be present. What are those symptoms? Sadness of mood and loss of interest. So for this Siggy Craps, first is S, and for moodness, a uh, sadness of mood, depressed mood. I is loss of interest. So, patient loses interest in the activity which he used to enjoy earlier. We have already discussed it. It is known as anidote. Then, G is for guilt or feeling of worthlessness. He is blaming himself for trivial matters. Then, energy is lacking. He gets tired easily. Caps, concentration, poor concentration. Appetite loss, weight loss. Some may have said uh, weight gain. That is in your atypical depression. P is for psychomotor agitation, means that it may be in case, patient may be rest, uh, restless. He is moving around, just doing uh, things because he is uh, getting anxiety, he is not able to do anything. Uh, he is doing purpose, purposeless movements. Okay, then we have decreased, it can be decreased, for example, in the uh, Depression, we have a term known as latent paralysis. The per person is, sleep, uh, is always lying and he feels heaviness in his limbs, even though his limbs are perfectly normal. Then suicidal thoughts is our eight. Sleep disturbances, insomnia. Okay, so hypersomnia is also a feature. Hypersomnia can be also a feature. And it is a, a presentation of atypical depression. So early morning awakening and reduce latency of REM sleep. And duration criterion is two weeks. This is important, two weeks. I'm so Physical signs. So there are certain physical signs. For example, Vera, Vera good cold. What are these? These are triangular shaped folds around the nasal corner of upper eyelid. Triangular shaped folds in the nasal corner, corner, corner of upper eyelid. Then we have omega sign. So omega sign fold appears above the root of the nose. So it appears like this, like uh, this. Shang, uh, you know, shangai hoti hai. Aise. So we have omega shape fold on the forehead. He's always depressed and he's always frustrated looking. So apart from the above mentioned symptoms, they can have special other features also, psychotic features also, atypical features also. So if uh, depression is with psychotic features, uh, so moderate and severe depression patients can develop psychotic features like delusion and hallucination. Okay, and these will be 
mood coagulant or mood incoagulant. We already discussed what is coagulant. It is in relation to the event. For example, someone's mother dies, he is sad. This is mood congruency. But if he is happy, that is not appropriate, that is not congruent. This is your appropriateness. And if his mood is congruent with himself, so for example, he is feeling happy inside and he is happy also looking, it is congruency. But he is sad, but he is still smiling, that is not your mood congruency, that is incongruent. Okay, so mood cognitive may we can have content of delusion or hallucination with consistent depressed mood. Okay, so person will think that, for example, person will think that the world is about to end. Yes, the hysteric delusion. Mood in cognitive means it is not persistent with his uh, depression. For example, he is thinking he is a very rich man on the earth. So he is feeling sad, but he is like, I'm the richest man in the world. This is the congruent with the mood. And this is known as psychotic depression. This features along with depression is known as psychotic depression. Then we have a typical feature that I was telling you just a few minutes ago. So a typical presentation that are reversed. For example, hypersomnia, increased appetite, weight gain. Latent paralysis that I was talking to you about, that they feel heaviness in their limbs. Presence of mood reactivity that it, it uh, improves if some positive thing occurs. Long standing uh, pattern of interpersonal rejection, sensitivity that he feels like everyone is uh, rejecting him, nobody is welcoming to him. With melancholic features, Depression is also known as melancholic depression or involutionary melancholy. It is usually seen in old age and it is characterized by prominent biological features. Like in your house, there must be grandparents, they wake up early, two hours before usual. They have they stop eating, they have weight loss. Okay, they have significant motor agitation or retardation. Okay, and you don't have, they have lack of mood. This is not necessarily present in every person in the old age, but what I'm trying to tell is about geriatric depression. Okay, so anidonia does not even improve with some positive events. Okay, it is an immensely, intensely depressed mood with full of despair, and it is also known as empty mood. They feel nothing or they feel just miserable. Depression is worse in the morning, and they have feeling of excessive guilt, and they have a higher risk for suicide. Right. With catatonic features, what is catatonic features? Like they have stupor and negativitism. Okay. Then we have endogenous or exogenous or reactive depression. So it is of two types. Uh, first is endogenous depression. It is absence of any precipitating negative life event. For example, uh, if someone is depressed because he didn't get good marks or good rank in NEET, that is your exogenous, means it has a source to it. Endogenous is when you wake up and you start feeling depressed. That is your endogenous, that is without any cause. Symptoms again are similar, early morning awakening, psychotic symptoms, psychomotor retardation and feeling of guilt and higher risk. The symptoms of endogenous were quite similar to today's psychotic and melancholic depression. Okay, so we uh, just related that geriatric depression is similar to your endogenous depression. Now, exogenous depression, it is reactive depression and occurs through a negative event in life. For example, someone's passing away in your life can affect you badly. So that is exogenous uh, depression. It has initial insomnia. You are always thinking about it. You cannot sleep. Absence of psychotic symptoms and increased somatic complaints and lower risk of suicide. Okay. Then we have biological factors. What is etiology? What causes depression? No one knows much about it. But here we have some biological factors. Neural oil, neurotransmitter disturbances. Decreased level of serotonin and norepinephrine. That's why we get SNRIs. They are thought to increase uh, these serotonin and norepinephrine and may help in your depression. Dopamine is also found to be decreased in subset of patients, but in not in all patients. Hormonal disturbances. Around 50% patients with depression have dysfunction of HP axis. 
So they have cortisol hypersecretion. So they have urinary free cortisol levels increase, salivary cortisol level increase, plasma cortisol level increase, as well as more definitive dexamethasone suppression test is also positive. What is this? That if we give dexamethasone, it should decrease cortisol levels because it is a, a inhibitor to the uh, pituitary hypothalamic axis. But even though after giving dexamethasone, the levels do not get suppressed, suggesting that it is not due to HPO hyperactivity. Okay. So here it is. The cortical uh, surge is not get suppressed, suggesting that this is not due to HPO hyperactivity. The person is intrinsically or uh, due to some reason is making cortisol itself, not due to any pathological or organic disease. We have hypothyroidism common in depression, or we can say a uh, feature of hypothyroidism is depression, not depression causing hypothyroidism. Then we have neuroanatomical considerations that we have decreased activity in prefrontal cortex. Our prefrontal cortex is responsible for our personality, our concentration of health. There is increased activity in limbic tissue. Then genetic factors. So this is important also that if someone has a family history of genetic uh, depression, that he might also have chances of getting depression. So gene mapping, it has been linked with an enzyme uh, with CAMP response of element binding on chromosome 2. Element binding protein chromosome 2. CREB. CAMP response element binding protein on chromosome 2. It is the locus which is found to be related to depression in families. Then serotonin transporter gene polymorphism is also shown to have susceptibility to development of depression. Then we have psychological theory. First is cognitive theory. It was given by Aaron Beck. Cognitive theory, what is say that the negative thoughts have a central role. But right now we see that in endogenous depression, there is no role of negative thoughts. But here they say the negative thoughts have a role in development of depression. So Beck uh, proposed the three central thoughts or ideas of depression and called them cognitive drive of depression. For example, first is negative view of self. You think that you are worthless. Negative view about environment, that I live in a very hostile environment, I'm helpless. And negative view about future, ideas of hopelessness. And learn helplessness according to this theory. Due to heavy, repeated adverse events, he has been bombarded by so many adverse events. First, he was not uh, able to put, uh, get a good friend, then his girlfriend rejected him, his family rejected him. He is not able to get a job. So, these adverse events started believing him that he has no control over the events happening around him and he lose the motivation to act for them. And this results in depression. Then we have treatment. So pharmacotherapy, we already stated about serotonin and norepinephrine. So pharmacotherapy states that it is written that it can increase uh, or uh, uh, recover the patient from depression within a month. They have to double the chances. So available antidepressants, they have to begin for at least a month to exert a significant uh, therapeutic effects. Okay. So uh, we will choose, uh, that's why we will choose such a, uh, a drug because we are taking it for a long period of time. No? So we will choose mostly by side effect profile. What side effects are there in those drugs that can be uh, uh, used in our benefit to risk ratio? Okay. Uh, so uh, also we have prophylactic uh, treatment. What is prophylactic treatment? If they have it... Uh, Family history, if you start giving prophylactic, so they will have reduced number and severity of episodes of previously they were diagnosed with depression or they recurrent depression or people who have seasonal depression. Okay, so antidepressant treatment should be maintained for at least six months or equal to the duration of previous episode, which is whichever is greater. It is given to patients who has three or more depressive episodes. What we are saying about prophylactic treatment, if they have three or more de depressive episodes, we can give them a prophylactic treatment. Okay? Have major chron chronic major depressive episodes. That is more than two years, they have 
What are the treatments versus uh, triacetic and tetracetic antidepressants that we have already discussed in our previous? Their first type of the antidepressants and they block the transporters of serotonin and norepinephrine, thus increasing their level. Second effects can be they antagonize muscarinic, histaminic, uh, serotonergic, and alpha 2 adrenergic receptors and blockage of cardiac sodium channel. So they will have unfavorable side effects because they are uh, antagonizing so many receptors. So uh, for it, we may have TCA toxicity. So after if there's toxicity due to unintentional or intentional overtake intake of these tablets. What we can have? Hypotension due to alpha-1 receptor. Chest pain, palpitation, alpha-2 adrenergic receptors, muscarinic receptors, CNS manifestations, altered sensory, altered sensorium, respiratory dis uh, depression and seizures due to histaminate, serotonergic side effects and alpha-1 uh, receptors. Peripheral manifestations can be there, again, dry mouth, blurred vision, urinary retention. Metabolic ac uh, acidosis is uh, present. Okay, ECG, what will it show? Prolongation of PR, QRS, and QT interval. Okay, AV block and right axis deviation. Then QRS uh, interval will be prolonged. And, and this is the basis of treatment of intravenous sodium by carbon. That is serum alkalinization. Okay, gastric lavage and activated charcoal is also there if it has been immediately reported, the case. Yes. The class of PC includes, we have imatrin, desipramine, triampetrin, amitriplin, nortriptylin, protriptylin, amoxapine, doxapine, maprotylin, clo. Me, Rahmine. So you can uh, remember two or three. For example, amines and triptylins. EC differ in their affinity for transporter with clomipramine being the most serotonin selective and desipramine the most non epileptic selective TCS. So clomipramine and desipramine are very popular. What are the side effects? Anticholinergic side effects. We already discussed that in the previous video. So in the anticholinergic side effect, we have constipation, urinary retention, blurred vision, dry mouth, decrease, sweating, and delete limb. Okay. Due to significant anticholinergic, uh, uh, they should be avoided in glaucoma and prostate hypertrophy because they will worsen these conditions. Side effects like alpha receptors can lead to postural hypertension. Okay. Then, uh, there will be hypertension. Can be seen. This is MCQ, they have highlighted this. Then, cardiac side effects TCA can cause tachycardia. We saw flattened T waves, prolonged QT interval, ST segment, and they can lead to cardiac arrhythmia. Neurological, they can cause fine tremors, excessive blockage of serotonin, and norepinephrine receptors can cause seizures. Sedation due to blockage of H1 histaminic receptors. Other examples, weight gain is very, very common. TSA amoxapine has found to be associated with hypercholactinemia, which may cause amenorrhea because uh, you have also seen if someone is taking depressant medication, so they have irregular menses. Then ECOVSK can also be there, impotence and the lactoria can also be there. Important properties of individual drugs that you should remember, for, for example, amoxapine, we read it. Uh, has hydrocholactin, it is a D2 blocker, and then it can cause extrapyramidal side effects like antipsychotics. Then we have inframin, it causes nocturnal aneurysis. Okay, however, the drug of choice of de is desmopressin, the treatment of choice is behavioral methods like night alarms. That like there is a blanket, if it gets wet, then it is night alarm. So whenever he has an urge of sensation, we are conditioning him to wake up. Okay, clomipramine is the first line therapy in the OCD. However, it is, however, due to better side effect, SSI is a preference. Clomipramine is over. Then, selective serotonin retake of inhibitors, they revolutionized psychiatry, psychiatric branch. So, these are most commonly prescribed antidepressants. 
they act by blocking reuptake of serotonin and do not have problematic side effects as tricyclic antidepressants. So SSRIs give fluvexidine, fluvoxamine, citalopram, many, many. Sertaline is important. Peroxidine is also important. It came in meat. This, uh, uh, a question about this came in meat. And Vilda, Vilazo, no. SSR is a first drug for depression, OCD, post-traumatic stress, panic disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, photo bias. This is very, very important to us of drug. It is drug of choice for many, many diseases. Side effects, we have GI side effects. Most commonly, they include nausea, most common diarrhea, anorexia, constipation. Constipation is seen with peroxidase. How you remember the name of peroxidase? It is like a parrot, clean parrot. Okay, then let's do it in the last short, uh, lasting and improve with time. Sexual dysfunction, they have an orgasm, yeah, decreased libido, inhibited orgasm, most common side effects. Then again, QT prolongation. CNS side effects is they can have anxiety, insomnia, sedation, vivid dreams, nightmares, emotion, blunting, seizures, exopyramidal side effects, and sweat. Anticholinergic, they are mostly associated with the parrot, peroxidin. Then, hematological adverse effects can be there, like platelet irritation, hyponatremia. Miscellaneous is weight gain is a very common side effect, therefore, they are uh, given to ladies uh, very carefully. They may rarely cause hypoprolactinia, not important. Okay, so concurrent administration of an SSRI and MAU inhibitors can lead to serotonin syndrome. What is serotonin syndrome? When this blast of serotonin in your body. So if you give any two drugs that increase serotonin, for example, MAU inhibitors, SSRI, a typical antidepressant, so they will cause serotonin syndrome, which is potentially fatal. And what will it cause? Diarrhea, restlessness hyperreflexia, agitation, autonomic instability, and myoclonus. Okay, myoclonus is important. And what is its treatment? Cytoheptogen and other supportive treatments. Then virtual sector is a new uh, is a new type of prior inhibitor. It has uh, said to have improved cognitive effects also. Okay, so it acts on your serotonin receptor as well as on your uh, F5HT, well, serotonin receptors only. Then we have SNRIs. So, what are SNRIs? These are serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. It is double the, yeah, because it is all, not only acting on serotonin, it is also acting on norepinephrine. So, so they are made up of neuronal serotonin and uh, norepinephrine uptake, it blocks. Okay, so they have the dual reuptake inhibitor of both the serotonin and your norepinephrine. What is venalafaxin? Okay, dual exit. So, these are the two popular examples that you can remember. It has similar side effects like SSRI, but SSRI can cause hypertension in at higher dosages, and that was rare in your SNRI, SSRIs and your anti uh, atypical. Sorry. PCs, tricyclic antidepressants. Then discontinuation syndrome, this is important. If you suddenly discontinue antidepressant, it causes discontinuation syndrome. So we have this Finnish mnemonic. We have flu-like symptoms, we have lethargy, fatigue, aches. We have insomnia, we have nausea, we have imbalance, vertigo, dizziness. We have sensory disturbances like paresthesia, then we have hyperarousal, anxiety, and irritability. All antidepressants uh, uh, can cause discontinuation syndrome. Venlafaxine is most associated with your uh, discontinuation syndrome. What is this? It's an SNR. And peroxidin and fluvoxamine are also associated with the discontinuation syndrome. And then monoamine oxidase inhibitor, these inhibit monoamine's metabolism. Okay, so monoamine, it has two, uh, monoamine oxidase inhibitor has two forms. Okay, MAO A, monoamine oxidase has MAO A. It is for metabolism of uh, serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. If we inhibit MAO A inhibitor, oh sorry, MAO A, if we inhibit it, serotonin, norepinephrine, dopamine won't be degraded. Then MAO B, it is 
Cordoba mein metabolism. So non-selective mom inhibitors, which is tricyclopramine, phenylalanine. Okay, they inhibit these both isoforms irreversibly. But now they are rarely used because they cause hypertensive crisis. Okay, mom inhibitors and SSRIs are more uh, effective than your tricyclic antidepressants. So they are used in atypical depression. But in atypical depression, they were more effective. Now we have cheese reaction. This is a very important reaction. And it is related historically. It was seen whenever you eat cheese with red wine, you started having some symptoms. And why was it? Because cheese and red wine, they come uh, eat tyramine and you are having mom inhibitors as well. So will, they will cause indirectly, they will increase sympathomimetic activity. So what happens is when these th th things are consumed, mom is present in a GIT, it will degrade the tyramine. So excess tyramine would be there. But if you are taking mom inhibitors, the tyramine will escape this degradation and it will be dangerously elevated in your blood. That is called hypertensive crisis. This is known as cheese reaction. So people who are on mom inhibitors are said to have, not to have cheese with red wine. Pentolamine is a drug of choice in cheese reaction. Then we have atypical antidepressants. They have novel mechanism uh, for uh, atypical uh, antidepressants. First, we have trazodone and nefazone. Uh, nefazodone. These are classified as SARI, serotonin antagonists, and reuptake inhibitors. So their mechanism is weak inhibition of serotonin reuptake and strong antagonism of serotonin receptors. Trazodone has this important side effect, priapism. I know you may be doing what is priapism. So trazodone has a priapism as a side effect. This is a MCQ question. Then we have metaz uh, metazapine. It is also uh, a nor this is not adrenaline and specific serotonergic antidepressant. It acts on alpha 2 receptors and increase firing of serotonin and norepinephrine. And it antagonizes uh, serotonin receptor. It causes sedation, weight gain, but does not have sexual side effect. That is practical with the talking about. And then we have bupropion. Bupropion is very, very famous. Why it's famous? Let's see. It is norepinephrine dopamine reuptake inhibitor. What's its mechanism? It inhibits reuptake of norepinephrine and dopamine. Okay. So, advantage is it is good side effect profile with low risk of sexual uh, side effect, weight gain, or sedation. The most common uh, side effects are insomnia, tremor, restlessness, and nausea. So, but the most worrisome side effect is seizures, which is only seen in high risk. Okay. Dupropion is also used for smoking cessation. So, this is important. Okay. Then, tianipin and anipitin, they are enhancing reuptake inhibitors of serotonin. Antipsychotics, if the uh, patient has deep uh, depression with psychotic symptoms, the combination of antidepressant and the antipsychotics can be used. Okay. So, in uh, 2019, FDA uh, approved nasal spray of esketamine that is used to treat treatment resistant depression. What are the important points? It has a novel mechanism that it has a glutamate receptor. So we are coming to glutamate receptors. Earlier we were more focused on serotonin or epinephrine and dopamine receptors. And it's claimed to have much uh, 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 faster onset of action. Okay, it uh, treats treatment resistant depression. What is treatment depressant, uh, resistant depression? If two or more antidepressants cannot improve the mood of the person, given in adequate dosage and in adequate and for adequate period of time, it is a nasal spray, it is esketamine. Okay, and uh, it is not an OTC. Uh, OTC means over the counter drug. It is not an over the counter drug. Then we have psychotherapy. So this was all pharmacological. Now we have psychotherapy. So first is cognitive behavioral therapy, behavioral therapy, you must have heard about it, it's very famous. 
So what is it about your uh, character in your cognitive distortion? Meaning uh, uh, that you have a faulty thinking and you have to replace this faulty thinking and behavior with that other thing. For example, I have uh, this habit that in anxiety, I, uh, uh, I start pulling my hair. This is trichotillomania. So if I replace it with some other work like uh, doodling or writing a journal, so if I it's it's say it easy, it, I'm saying it easily, but it's not that easy. But if you replace your bad habits with your good habits, this is your cognitive mutative therapy, and it is most effective therapy, psychotherapy in depression. Then we have interpersonal therapy. The focus is management of current interpersonal problems. For example, due to need, you didn't get a good run, you got depressed. So you will solve that problem and that will lead to in, uh, uh, improvement of symptoms. Okay. Then other somatic therapies, we have uh, shock. Shock is electroconvulsive therapy. So in severe depression or if someone has suicidal risk, ECT is a treatment modality that is preferred. And it is also preferred in severe depression with stupor. Okay. Then we have transcranial magnetic stimulation. It is a newer modality used nowadays. So what we do? We use magnetic energy to stimulate nerve cells. It is not convulsive. It does not require anesthesia, safe side effect profile, and is not associated with cognitive side effect, but it is not widespread right now. Then we can stimulate vagal nerve using an electrode. Then this is a deep brain stimulation you have seen. They say the uh, TV also, I believe that uh, it is not actually approved for treatment of uh, depression. But what we'll do, we'll uh, take implantation of these and apply them in specific areas of brain in patients with have chronic and intractable depression. Sleep deprivation is also said to have increased benefits in typical uh, 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 in, uh, depression. However, these are transient and they can be reversed, right? Because next day, we'll see. Okay. So then we have phototherapy. Phototherapy, it is for seasonal depression. So when there is bad, you know, whether the people get depressed, when there's winter, they get severe uh, depressed. So for that, we use phototherapy. Okay. We expose them to bright light. Then, we have combination of pharma, pharmacotherapy and psychotherapy for depression and ECK is preferred in patients who have suicides. Then we come to bipolar. Bipolar is uh, uh, addressed with two episodes, depression, mania or hypomania. So it's like a graph. Even if patient has only maniac episode, then also we can say it is uh, bipolar. Okay. So lifetime prevalence is 1%. It is quite similar in men and women. They have prevalence ratio of 1 is to 1 only. Maniac episodes are more common in men and depressive episodes are more common in women. Okay, so we have bipolar of two types. Bipolar 1 and bipolar 2. So, uh, types of bipolar. Okay. So, bipolar 1 by 2, it is called as schizopolar bipolar disorder. We have schizoaffective disorder. Bipolar 1, it is mania with depression or mania alone. Bipolar 1 and a half. <laughs> so what is the depression with protracted hypomania? Now it is hypomania. Bipolar 2, it is depression with discrete hypomania episodes. And bipolar 2 and a half, it is depression superimposed with cyclothymia. Cyclothymia is persistent low mood. It is lesser than depression with love weightage of mood. Then bipolar 3. Depression plus induced hypomania. The hypomania is occurring solely in association with antidepressants or other somatic treatments. Then we have bipolar 3 and a half where we have bipolar due to substance abuse. Substance abuse is the most common cause of bipolar. Then we have bipolar 4. Depression superimposed with hyperthermic temperament. He gets so uh, uh, just giving a stimulus, he gets very angry. 
Okay. So first time, by follow was only of two times. Uh, I am also reading this for the first time. The dare of so many times. Then symptom, the pneumonia is my Asia past GDP. Past GDP. Okay, so out of this again, five out of uh, nine symptoms should be present and first two symptoms should always be present. What are the first two symptoms? Mood elevation and increased activity levels. So my Asia past GDP, first is my mood elevation, that is excessive happiness or irritable. Second is activity levels are increased. First, flight of ideas. We have already discussed flight of ideas, how it is making and they're not connected to each other then uh past a activity level increased and energy increased as for sleep is decreased the patient is feeling restlessness yes insomnia uh, sixth is talkativeness over talkativeness then four seventh is grandiose ideas and increased self-esteem that he is the richest most powerful most local living man on the earth Distractibility, he is not able to concentrate. For example, I'm not able to concentrate on my studies, but that doesn't mean I have bipolar. Okay, then painful consequences. That he is involved in uh, painful consequences, like for example, he foolishly invested uh, millions and millions in a scheme. He, uh, right? Then we have to like to fit on its schemes. Then we have psychotic symptoms. Uh, so, I'm sorry, duration of criteria, it is seven days. So, psychotic symptoms, apart from above mentioned symptoms, person should also have psychotic symptoms like fusion and hallucination. Again, they can be mood for great and they can be mood in for great. Okay. So, but now the mood pregnancy is with associated with mania, not depression, like the depressed. Hypomania. It is similar to mania, however, it is not severe enough to cause social and occupational impairment and duration criteria for hypomania is four days. Mixed, when we have both maniac and depressive disorder and it should at least last for seven days. Okay, etiology again neurotransmitter, but this time dopamine is increased in manic episodes. Okay, and the genetic factor there was chromosome 2. Okay, we have, we have chromosome 18 and 22Q. Okay, treatment of the depends on the face. If the patient is a uh, mania, we get antipsychotics. If it is depression, we get uh, antidepressants. Okay, so patient requires treatment during acute illness, whatever episode he has. And he also requires prophylaxis for the Further, for example, right now is mania, but he will go into depression later. So we can give prophylactic antidepressants. The following classes of drugs are used in bipolar disorder. First is mood stabilizer. So most common and famous mood stabilizer is lithium, valproate, and carbamazepine. Ox carbamazepine and lamotrigine are also used okay, very commonly. Lithium, it is a prototype drug. Okay, and it is to be started takes one to two weeks to start. So it is a prototype that is used to perform resistant cases. Okay, why? Because it has a very low uh, low therapeutic index. It can go into toxicity easily. Okay? So it is supplemented by other mood stabilizers. Then Valproate has surpassed lithium in use for acute mania due to better tolerability. Lamotrigine can be used. Okay, and it is treatment of acute uh, depress depressive episode of bipolar. So it is used in depre bipolar depression. Antipsychotics are usually better, have better tolerance than side effects. Okay, benzodiazepines like clonazepam, clonazepam to calm down the person. Antidepressants are never used alone. Okay, because they can cause mania. So always uh, used with mood stabilizers. Now, treatment guidelines. If someone is in severe mania or mixed episode, lithium is given in combination with antipsychotic or valve. In combination with an antipsychotic, but look, no, lithium or valve fluid with antipsychotics. If less uh, ill patient, monotherapy with lithium, valve fluid, or atypical antipsychotics like olanzapine can be used. Short term treatment is by, with benzodiazepine, like clonazepam, clonazepam. Clonazepam to calm down the person can be used. Valproate is uh, preferable lithium in mixed episodes. If patient has psychotic symptoms, antipsychotics must be added to the treatment regime. 
okay we, this is a known logical fact then acute depression bipolar depression okay so lithium lamotrigine is used mood stabilizer in severely ill patient both lithium and antidepressants can be used quetiapine it is an snri it is used when combination with olanzapine and fluoxetine fluoxetine is your again snri sorry ssri antidepressant monotherapy should never be given we have there only that ect again for high suicide risk patient maintenance usually given after two or more episodes of bipolar okay or after single main episode if it was associated with significant so maintenance drugs are also given uh, then treatment should be last uh, continued for at least two years now we come to lithium this is a very world famous drug so it is used in both acute episodes both mania and depression as well as profile x so uh, this john fg kate was the first person to use lithium as a treatment drug of mania and prophylactic drug lithium is a monovalent cation okay bhai hai sodium ka it is brother of sodium it gets rapidly and completely absorbed after oral administration okay lithium does not bind to plasma protein is not metabolized in the body and it is excreted through kidney unchanged what are the indications acute maniac episodes okay so it takes one to three days to a uh, week sorry to act and it is uh, again given with benzodiazepines and back to it to get okay lithium is also effective for prophylaxis it can also be given for depression and prophylaxis okay and it is also given on maintenance therapy it decreases the frequency severity and depression uh, duration of both maniac and depressive episodes Lithium is effective anti-suicidal agent and decreases suicide rate by eighty percent in bipolar patients. Lithium is also used in stress affective disorder as well as as an adjuvant to antidepressant in major depressive disorders. Other indications can be in OCD, aggression, headache like cl- cluster headache, migraine, gout, epilepsy, neutropenia, ulcerative colitis. Okay, then let us correlate with uh, lithium responsiveness. So, uh, euphoric may or mania. In euphoric mania, the patient is in total euphoria. So we can uh, give it in uh, this euphoric mania. If we have three or fewer episodes of mania, then we can give lithium because if he has more episodes of four or more episodes, the lithium has poor. Uh, Uh, effectiveness. And then MDI sequence. It is that person in whom the mood depression are like this. First, he goes to mania, depression, and then interval. It responds better to lithium. Absence of rapid cycling. What is rapid cycling? Depression, mania, depression, mania, depression, mania. So fast is changing. So in uh, if there is absence of rapid cycling, we can give lithium. If you have family history of bipolar, we can give lithium. Absence of comorbidity like late uh substance use because later on the narrow therapeutic index drug monitoring is required. So what is its uh effective concentration? One to one point five milli equivalent per day. Okay, maintenance therapy is point six to point one two milli equivalent per day. Okay, side effects. It has neurological side effects. It is a postural tremors. It can be treated with beta blockers like propanolol. Okay, then endocrine it can cause hypothyroidism. Okay, renal it causes polyuria and it may be due and can lead to poly, uh, diabetes insipidus, which is treated with thiazide diuretics. Okay, other dermatological effects can be dermatological effects can be acne, psoriasis, hair loss, and rashes. It has teratogenic effect also. It most commonly causes yeast stains and normally of dry tuscular valves. Okay. Then uh, lithium toxicity, uh, we already established that it has low therapeutic index, so it causes renal impairment. We have saw that dehydration and low sodium diet. So uh, what are the risk factors? These are the risk factors that if someone has renal impairment because it is excreted, so can be unchanged. If someone has dehydration or low sodium in diet, then lithium toxicity can occur. And we already know it has narrow therapeutic index. 
above 1.5 years, it's toxic to toxicity starts. What are the signs and symptoms of toxicity? GI symptoms like pain, abdominal vomiting, post tremors, ataxia, this arthritis, loss of consciousness, and increased deep tendon reflexes. Okay, what is the management? Correct dehydration, use of polyethyl glycol, not charcoal to absorb lithium. Hemodialysis can be done if it is a very severe case. Pregnancy and use of mood stabilizer. So, risk of relapse is very common in uh, bipolar and pregnancy and postpartum in increases. Postpartum. Partum, sorry, I'm sorry. Postpartum. So, uh, we cannot abruptly stop mood stabilizers. Okay, because it will have, uh, because relapse will have both the mother and the child. No mood stabilizer is safe, so we have to use risk is to benefit ratio. Lithium use in pregnancy can cause each an anomaly, but the risk is very low. So then again, we'll see risk, uh, risk is to benefit ratio. Okay, if lithium is used during pregnancy, high resolution ultrasound and echocardiogram should be done every six uh, at 16 and 18 weeks. At the end of pregnancy, rapid changes in total body water, uh, total body water, and may predispose to lethal toxicity. So we'll give lethal to the mother, and we'll make sure that she does not get into toxicity, and we'll use ultrasound to monitor the baby at six and eight weeks. If you use valfred, valfred is the most teratogenic drug. This is an absolute point. Okay, and it should be avoided because it can cause neural tube defect because it causes folate suppression. Okay, or even if we are giving valfred, then we'll get folate supplements. Okay, so use folate for at least one month before conception, decrease the chances of development of neural tube defects. Okay, so uh, then we have carbamazepine. It is also teratogenic, should be avoided. Okay, it can also cause neural tube defect, but it is less risk in comparison to valfred. Again, we will give folate one month prior to conception. And we may, may might know, know when she will get conceived. So we will start folate as soon as she decides to get pregnant. Okay, if carbazepine is used, vitamin K is given prophylactically to mother and baby to prevent hemorrhagic disease. Okay, so uh, antipsychotics are more safer than mood stabilizers in pregnancy for that teratogenic effect. If patient antipsychotics can be preferred if patient goes in maniac phase in pregnancy. Okay, other mood disorders we have recurrent depressive disorder that we have more than one depressive episode and diagnosis of recurrent depressive or disorder is made. Then premenstrual dysphoric disorder, it has been newly added. It is characterized by uh, one month, uh, one week before menses. So, uh, that uh, it uh, uh, onsets, they start have depressive symptoms and it improved after onset of menses. Okay. And after that, it is not there. So it, it only comes one week prior to the menses. So what it has, irritable mood, emotional liability, depressed mood, anxiety symptoms. Okay, treatment is uh, it involves analgesics and diuretics for fluid retention so that it does not have toxicity. Then we have this thing it is persistent low mood. Okay, mild depressive uh, symptoms, not enough to uh, diagnose major depressive episode for a period of more than two years. Then we have chronic depression. If depression continues for more than two years, it is known as chronic depression. Double depression, if someone was having dysthymia and suddenly it converted into your major depressive episode, then it is known as double depression. <coughs> cyclothymia, we also read it before. So what is cyclothymia? It is a milder form of bipolar in which mania can depressive uh, episodes occur, but they're not severe enough to make up to the diagnosis of mania, hypomania, depression. And they should also last for two years. Rapid cycling, if patient has bipolar disorder and has four or more episodes of mania, hypomania, depression in one calendar year. Then suicide. So psychiatric patients are most common at the risk of suicide. And depressive disorders are most common. Alcohol de dependence and schizophrenia. Their most common side effect is the uh, highest risk of suicide. Okay, so low level of this 
H sorry five hydroxy indole with acidic acid, which is a metabolite of serotonin, is associated with higher suicide rates. Okay, so what are other risk factors? The previous suicide attempt is the most important risk factor. Writing a suicide note, indication that he is going to commit suicide or transferring money to loved one that person is about to commit suicide. Okay, <laughs> hopelessness, delusion or hallucination, substance use and males are more prone to suicide. Age more than 45, divorced, unemployed, chronic illness, family history of suicide, poor social support. It is important that that person has a social support and sexual abuse. Hanging is the most common method of suicide. There is poison. <laughs> okay. So first we have parasuicide. When a person indulges self-injurious behavior, however, he cannot commit suicide. He is not strong enough to commit suicide. Physician suicide because physicians, uh, doctors, psychiatrists, they have uh, more common chances of committing suicide. Copycat suicide, what happens is adolescents, they have some person um, in same group that is commit suicide one after another and this is influential means that uh, I have a friend he committed suicide so also committed suicide or in a TV program or movie there was a person his pop star committed suicide so I also committed suicide so it's a copycat suicide psychiatric aspects of pregnancy this is important first we have postpartum blues it is natural that after delivering the baby the mother feels tearful emotionally liability and is sad she has sleep disturbances so she may have blues but this does not account for treatment except support to the mother then we have postpartum depression this is more severe and prolonged okay so depressive episodes can occur after childbirth or before delivery and these collectively are referred to as depressive episodes with peripartum onset. Okay, so uh, postpartum blue is very common. It uh, three to five days after childbirth, it uh, is uh, onset and tearfulness, yes. But postpartum depression is very less common. It occurs within three months of childbirth, and again, it also tearfulness. Next, emotionally, both are liable. Anhedonia, it is a symptom of depression. It is common in postpartum depression. Sleep disturbance are more common in postpartum depression. Suicidal thoughts are common in both, uh, postpartum depression. History of mood disorder is common in postpartum depression. Family history in postpartum depression. Guilt in postpartum depression. Increased risk of depression in future, it is common in postpartum depression. And treatment of postpartum depression is pharmacotherapy with psychotherapy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Brexel, Brexelolone, it is a uh, pregnenolone that mimics the hormone that decreases after childbirth. So, it can be used in postpartum depression. Well, it adds on GABA A receptors, which is dysregulated in postpartum people. Then, postpartum psychosis is very severe. It occurs in two to three weeks of uh, delivery. So what are important characteristics? Patient has insomnia, fearfulness, emotional liability, followed by delusion and hallucinations. The content of delusion may be involved in thoughts like baby is dead, or I didn't give any birth, or any persecutory ideas. Hallucination have same content. So this is considered a psychiatric emergency, and patient has hallucination and delusion, and rarely they can commit suicide or infanticide. Postpartum psychosis is seen as an Episode of bipolar and childbirth is considered as a stressor. Two thirds of patients they develop other mania, uh, mood disorders like mania, depression, or mixed depression. And about fifty to sixty percent of women who had given birth to the first child, and in fifty percent of the cases, the lady was associated with a psychiatric perinatal complications. So fifty to sixty percent women they can. Uh, uh, of affected women, are for, uh, they get this episode when they're delivering the first child. Okay, the fifty percent of the affected women they have family history, and their subsequent risk of uh, same thing, uh, uh, psychosis in subsequent pregnancy. In most cases, recovery is there. Treatment is an antipsychotic uh, combination of lithium and possibly anti.
it does. Thank you.